Hey everyone! Today, I'm super excited to show you how I'll be painting the tortured warriors from Edge miniatures. These amazing miniatures are a part of the Dark Elf Raiders faction from One Page Rule. Let's get started! First, I like to dry brush mummy robes all over the miniature to bring out the salient sides. I know this part might not be the most exciting, but trust me, it's important. Not only does it help the next colors stick better, but it also sets up a great foundation for some of the highlights. Moving on to the next step, I'm going to start with the first layer of flesh using tan flesh. The goal here is to cover all of the white areas while leaving some black in the corners. Later on, we'll use barbarian flesh and flesh wash to create a really nice gradient effect on the skin. I don't know why, but there's just something satisfying about giving life to a miniature painting skin. I went with elven flesh for the loincloths, because, you know, gotta keep it in the family. Maybe my pointy-eared cousins will appreciate the recycling inclination. Or maybe not. To paint the boots and leather areas, I went with a well-diluted matte black. While I'm not completely happy with how it turned out, I think the torture master effect still comes through. In hindsight, I could have used my usual combo of a very diluted necromancer cloak followed by black tone for a smoother result. But hey, it gets the job done and that's what matters. So, for this armor piece, I'm thinking of using greedy gold. I'm going for a light steampunk theme with this line. In the past, I went a bit overboard with the gold on the old edge miniature range and it ended up looking too steampunk. Moving on to the skin. As I promised earlier, I'll be using Barbarian Flesh. However, this time, I'm going to leave a good portion of the corners in tan flesh to really emphasize the muscular structure. I'll be using gunmetal on the weapons, chains, and plate armors. I know it's a classic choice, but it always does the trick. Let's wait for those shiny colors that the sadistic elves are so fond of. You don't need to cover all the black areas. In fact, it's better to leave the deeper recesses in black. This way, when I apply the black tone later on, it'll create a deeper gradient effect. Oh, and don't forget to paint a layer on the boot nails too. Gotta make sure they're ready to kick some ass. Now, I'm moving on to painting the leather parts of the armor in the mask. First up, I'll apply a coat of crusted sore. My plan is to finish with a purple color because it always matches really well with this faction. However, I want a slightly reddish purple this time around. In the past, I used a more neutral purple on my old miniatures, but it wasn't quite steampunk enough for my taste. So, this time I'm going for something a bit more bold and eye-catching. I gotta say, I'm pretty darn pleased with how this turned out. It feels especially rewarding since this new range of miniatures has more standardized armors and I really wanted to make this part stand out. I might even replicate something similar when I paint up a unit with the older models. It's a bummer that I had to leave so many of my old miniatures back in Portugal, but at the same time, it's a chance for me to improve my skills with painting and 3D printing. To keep with the steampunk theme, I'm going to paint the strings in leather brown. It's a bit of a fantastical touch, but that's exactly what I'm going for. While the flat colors may look a little odd right now, once we apply the inks, everything will really start to come together. Next up, I'm going to apply some warlock purple to the leather parts of the armor. I'm purposely leaving the edges encrusted sore to create a worn effect and really make the contrast pop. Originally, I thought about painting the little pikes in a bone color, but after trying it out, I found that it was too much work and didn't look as convincing as painting them in purple. As for the larger pikes, those will definitely be painted bone color. For this step, it's not necessary to have perfect coverage. The ink will do its magic and blend everything together creating a nice gradient effect. Alright, let's work on the bandages now. I'm going to apply another coat of mummy robes, but remember to leave the deeper areas black to create a nice gradient. The final result will give the bandages a very natural look. Personally, I like to balance realism and fantasy when I'm painting.
And now, we come to the most exciting part. We're going to apply a wash of flesh wash on the skin and loincloth. I absolutely love this step because it really brings the miniature to life, like it's finally coming out of its incubation chamber. As I'm painting this miniature, I can't help but think that I also want to paint a unit with the older models. Even though these newer models are more detailed, the older ones had more dynamic poses and muscular features. I feel like the two ranges complement each other really well. Now comes a challenging step. I'll be painting all the pipes in jungle green, which is the exact opposite of purple. While I do like the color and the final effect it gives, I'm not too thrilled with the texture of the paint. Maybe it's just the pot I have, but I find it hard to mix well and it doesn't adhere well on the miniature. I've tried different techniques, but it's still difficult to work with. Usually, I would apply a layer of darker green first, but for this miniature, I want a brighter result. It's time for a color that I'm absolutely in love with, Dragon Red. I just can't get enough of it. If it were up to me, I'd paint all my miniatures in this color. But for now, we'll just use it to paint the vials on the body and the boots. I usually like to lighten this color with a bit of pure red, as the two colors complement each other perfectly. These miniatures have quite a few vials, and the red really makes pop the skin, the green pipes, and even the boots. Alright, now it's time to make those peaks stand out. We'll apply a layer of mummy robes to give them that bone-like appearance. I asked the creator how many peaks he wanted for his dark elves, and he said all of them. While I don't necessarily agree with the artistic choice, I have to admit that it looks pretty darn good. It gives them an even wilder look, and since it corresponds to the lore of the Damocles universe, I'm not going to complain. This way, I can play them both at one page rule and with my own rules. To be honest, I'm feeling pretty down about the future of Warhammer 40k. With the upcoming release of version 10 of the rules, I can't help but feel skeptical. I don't have much faith that Games Workshop will ever prioritize making a balanced and enjoyable game, and even with access to a 3D printer, it's tough to keep up with the constantly evolving meta. It's frustrating to feel like the hobby I love is becoming more and more unattainable. But hey! I'm a glutton for punishment, so I'll give it a shot and see what kind of chaos ensues. Who knows, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, or maybe I'll just end up with a few more grey hairs. Next up, I'm going to apply a purple tone wash to the armor and mask to tie all the colors together. This step always adds a ton of contrast, and it really makes this part of the miniature pop. Don't worry too much if some of the ink gets on the claws. In fact, letting the ink run onto the armor will give a more realistic effect. Next, I'm going to apply a coat of green tone to the pipes to give them a nice verdigris effect. When it comes to miniature painting, it's important to have a steady hand and a good eye for detail. But don't worry, practice makes perfect. The more you paint, the better you'll get. And remember, there's no right or wrong way to paint a miniature. It's all about finding your own style and techniques that work for you. Next, a coat of strong tone will really bring out the golden parts of the armor and make them shine. One of the most rewarding aspects of miniature painting is seeing the finished product on the gaming table. It's amazing to see your hard work pay off in a beautifully painted army that you can use to dominate your opponents on the battlefield. But that's the beauty of this hobby, you never know what kind of crazy stuff is going to happen on the tabletop. So, whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, enjoy the process of painting and have fun with your hobby. For the rest of the armor, I'll be using a coat of dark tone in gunmetal to create a sleek, metallic look. The Warhammer hobby in wargaming in general can be a great way to relieve stress and express your creativity. It's also a great way to meet new people and make friends with a shared interest. 
and with the rise of 3D printing, there's never been a better time to get into the hobby. Lastly, a layer of soft tone on the bones and bandages will give them a realistic, weathered appearance that adds to the overall character of the miniature. It's important to remember that each step of the painting process contributes to the final result, and taking your time with each layer will ultimately result in a more polished and impressive figure. I begin by applying a layer of pure red to the end of the vials, and I'm pleased with the effect it creates. Next, I move on to painting the base. I start with a coat of desert yellow. And while it dries, I work on the highlights for the skin. This step is optional, but I like the way it looks in the end. It's important to dilute the paint properly to avoid losing the gradient work done earlier. Once the miniature is complete, I move on to the base. I apply a wash of flesh wash to the cobblestones. And then paint the borders and pot and weapon bronze. If there are any skulls on the base, I paint them like the bones on the miniature. A textured base is a great way to enhance the overall look of the miniature. In fact, a good base can make up almost half of the overall effect. To maintain a sinister and dark atmosphere, I paint the rest of the surface of the base in matte black. These miniatures come with pre-made matching bases that you can purchase for a very low price, so it can be worth it for the time saved. Remember, a good base is half of the miniature. However, if you're adding new units to an existing army, it's better to stick with the same style of base to maintain consistency. Then, I lighten the cobblestones with elven flesh for a finishing touch. Finally, I apply a last wash of light tone and the miniature is complete. It's always great when you can achieve exactly what you envision with your painting. With just a few tweaks, my miniatures will be perfect. And the best part is, I still have more miniatures to paint. I can't wait to add even more to my collection, including characters and elite troops. I hope you enjoyed these miniatures sculpted by Edge Miniature The Cursed Dimension. The level of detail and craftsmanship is truly amazing. It's great to see a sculptor who is constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the world of miniature figurines. I'm particularly excited about the fact that Edge Miniature is in the process of redoing their entire range of Dark Elves miniatures. Although his old range was already extensive and well-made, I can't wait to see what new and exciting designs they come up with. It's always inspiring to see artists and craftsmen constantly striving to improve and innovate. To be completely honest with you, I had the Games Workshop version of these miniatures sitting in a box for two whole years. At first, I wanted to mix and match them with the Edge miniature versions, but ultimately, I decided to sell them off for the price of a bottle of resin and use that money to build a whole army instead. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, don't worry, because you can still order these minis from the shop and they'll arrive within two or three weeks. We've already printed tens of thousands of them, so we're pretty confident about the quality. Plus, if you check the description, you'll find a discount code for 15% off your purchase. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video, as it took a lot of work to put together. But, it was also really fun to make. Be sure to stay tuned for our next video.